So, uh, Professor Liu is going to teach you a probably most most important concept for your introduction, uh, C plus plus class. Uh, this chapter will lead you to go to advanced C plus plus create class and object because C plus plus is a object oriented programming and is based on class and objects. But at this moment, we didn't see class object yet. We have a small tiny program, but we have to take you to learn how to do a function. Okay, there are a bunch of functions at the Visual Studio already have it. So from now on, from now on, I want you to learn that at your main program, you don't have uh, you don't have a uh, action call. You don't have a call. You have bunch of the function call. All right. So I'm going to open up this one right now. Mm -hmm. So, um, first of all, I will start with the function. Those function already, you know, defined by Visual Studio library. So what is a uh, function? Function is small unit. So definition of function. A function is a block of code perform a task. So from now on, we're going to modularize your program. So you are going to make a task, every single small task, a function. So sometimes a function has only 15 lines or 20 lines. So what we do is divide and conquer. So who will make a mistake from 15 lines? No, even though you are a beginning programmer, you will not make mistake. A uh, large program usually uh, require you know thousands of lines, ten thousands of lines. Once you make a mistake, it's very very difficult to uh, trace and to debug. In this day, we do team programming anyway, so you will take some part of the duty for some part. So the best way is modulize everything. So ev once every everybody is responsible to small task. All right. So uh, so far we are uh, uh, OK. No, no, this is not void. This is not void function yet. All right. So we are going to start it. OK. So. Uh, we're going to see the built-in function. Okay, some some return, some void. It is from your language library, so it's already have it. And uh, in next chapter, we are going to do program define. We're going to define that. After that, <clears throat> so these are written by programmers defined in a program. Function allow for blocks of code to be used many times, so you can be reused. It's like a tool right now. You want to reuse them many times in a program, without having to duplicate code. Function allow large complex program to be broken down to a small manageable subtax. That's the most important thing. All right, so let's start to learn value return value return function okay so since value return means all value returning function perform a task and return precise only one you see the one is a uh, red color so it's remind you you can only remind one so typically typically a statement that call a function uh, assign the return value to a variable that's how we do it all right so so let me ask you right now. So who can remember this? All right. So uh, we today we teach you uh, the value returning function. Okay, from the Visual Studio library. Library. How uh, how many how many value I can return from one function? Can anybody tell me? How many value I could return from a f function? How many? one good job remember that one 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 okay you can only do one you can do only do one so let's take a look right now so building value returning function okay pow we 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 did pow 
this is a function you did not write it. It's from your Visual Studio library. Okay, so the function compute the base a number raised to a power. For example, pow. So pow, five to the third power. So normally, what we do is this. Okay, pay attention. A statement usually like this when we call a function. Usually, you want to call this function pow, and this function require two arguments, five and three. Okay, five and three. You know, sometimes two and six. Two, two argument. Anyway, then you assign to a variable. Why you need to assign to a variable? Because this function returns a value. Where are you going to return to? Right here. Return to a variable. All right. Sometimes you don't return to a variable. Sometimes you can display like five to the third power equal. Then you display. So two way to do it. You either return it to a variable, or you just go ahead display it. So right here, a return value could also be used in a comparison or calculator and can be printed to the screen. You print it to the screen right now. All right. Square root, also. Square root take one argument. The square root of forty nine seven. All right. It square s q r t d o w both are value return function. So to use it, you assign to a variable. We uh so both pow and square root take a double. So we return to a variable assign that is a double type. So uh then if you don't return, you can display that like uh the square root of forty nine as Q R T forty nine. All right. So so far okay. Right now, I am going to teach the most difficulty and most confusing、uh, function is called random number. Okay. So、uh, from here a random number to here, I need a one student read for me. Any one student? Anybody? Very clear, loud, and read for me. Anybody? Any volunteer? Yeah, I can hear you. Please, could you read them? Go ahead. Thank you so much. So, thank you so. Much. Who is reading this? Thank you. Can you tell me who's reading this? Kenny, thank you so much. I love you. All right. So, rain very important. So, I want to everybody who listen to Kenny's reading. So, when you do rain R A N D this one, you will return a number between zero to which number? What number? Anybody? Will be uh thirty two thousand seven hundred sixty seven. So everybody, let's pull out our Visual Studio right now, please. Let's pull out our Visual Studio right now. All right, so I'm going to create a new project. It's okay, an empty project, <coughs> and I'm going to call this、uh, chapter nine. Ah,、uh, class demo. Okay, 
slide, chapter 9, class demo. All right, so boys and girls, and uh, no, no, and right click it, add a new item. I'm just going to make the same name match to my clock, uh, solution. So, chapter 9, class demo. It's okay. All right, so let me have my golden seven line. Alright, so I also need you to work with me, so I need you to create this one too. Doesn't matter what name you create, just a small one. Can you do that, please? Alright, so I need you to create it. Now, after you create it, okay? After you have these, let's continue right now. So, did you have this right now? So, alright, so we are going to do this. It will return an integer. But remember, I want you to do is you will assign to a number to return. Okay, so random also return, random also return. So do me a favor right here. Everybody type integer. Okay, uh, my random none. It's okay. Can you do that? So my random num. Okay, then equal to R A N D. R A N D, okay. Can you do that for me first? All right, and you type C L. My random number is okay. Then, uh, my random num. Okay, can you do that for me, please? All right. So, gentlemen, ladies. All right. So please, uh, we're going to take a look. We're going, you know, we're going to actually experience how how do we do this? Is okay? So as I teach you, random function return return a value. So this is how we do it. We do returns a value. We return value, and based on that, we know the value is going to return a value between 0 to 32,767. So far, okay to you, everybody? Did you finish this one? Who still need time? Anybody who still need time? No? Okay, let's run it right now. Okay, since no one need time, let me run it. So you're going to build it. Uh, then you are going to start without debugging. I got 41. So I want to know what you get. You also get 41. Alright, that's why I want you to try it. I want to try it and I can explain to you why. Okay, let me explain to you right now. Okay, so uh, let me drag this thing to here a little bit. All right, so first we notice we got 41 right now. It's supposed to uh, 0 to 32,767. Anyway, this is not very useful. So we are going to narrow down this. Well, if uh, so first, let me explain why we all, you and I, both get 41. Okay, let me explain and come back to here. So first, we need to learn the function definition from mathematics. A function is a relation for which each value from the set of first, this is from the set's domain, it's called domain, okay? From first component of the ordered pair right here, and this is called a um, don't this 
called range. This is called domain. This is called range. All right. So everybody here so far, okay. All right. So you all get forty one. Good. I'll explain to you why we all got get forty one, and we're going to modify these. All right. So function. All right. So function is deal with our everyday life. You know, you may not feel it, but function is deal with everyday life. So our everyday life is is very ordered. It's ah、uh, predictable. Something predictable. All right. So let's take a look. Ten to two. That's fine. Four become eight. That's fine. Seven become four. And all right here. Um. Um. <coughs> If you put four and become a, and five become a, all right. So this possible different thing, but let me tell you this: this is not a function. So this one is a function. This one is not a function. <coughs> The main reason is this. Main reason is this: phi, phi, <coughs> phi. Domain is phi, and become four, and become seven. I want you think like this. I want you think like our everyday life <coughs> is reasonable and predictable. I want you think this is a machine. I want you think that's a machine. Okay, machine. So if I give five pound of the chocolate, if I give five, and I get. Four candy bar. All right. Then I do five pound of chocolate. Now I got seven candy bar. Do you see the? Did you see the unreasonable thing right now? If I provide the same input, I'm supposed to get same output. Life is like this way. Are、uh, you and I the life we live is this way? This is not a function. All right. So any mathematic thing you learn it because all the mathematic thing you learn is solving everyday life. You probably don't see that. You will see why I need to learn math. It just go to get you know. It's just going to help me to you know. Uh, go to college and, and, and apply to four years. No, mathematic actually help you solve everyday life. We use everyday life and we use a equation to solve for you. Isn't that cool? So this is predictable. This is unpredictable. So this one here is unpredictable. Again here. All right, at your mathematic class. We have a something called vertical line test. So this one no good. This one good. This one no good. This one no good. All right. Why is like that? For vertical test is same input. I want same output. Same input. I want same output. I don't want to two output. Okay. Mathematic. Mathematic is. Is infinity your math? That's why people say mathematics is beautiful, because only mathematics can、um, go beyond our everyday life. If you base on mathematics, if you base on mathematics, there's a ghost, there's a afterlife. You have to think from mathematics point of view. Mathematics has so many,、uh, you know, you know for. For example,、uh, I just quickly to explain to you. For in mathematic, um, two、um, D and three D tell you dramatic differently. For example, for example, if I'm going to put the ants right here, doesn't look like ants. Sorry, ants here. So ants going to go forward, back for this and. If I say this n is two D, then I'm going to have a butterfly here. Butterfly is three D. So it's based on ma mathematics. This butterfly can stop in front of this n, 
any time. The end has no clue about where it's come from. And so, actual 1D create that power. So people say that actual 1D is a ghost. But this is just, you know, I don't share anything with you. I'm just telling you the powerful of mathematics. Mathematics is beautiful. All right. So these are mathematics, but in our real life, in our real life, random number generator is a function. Anything you learn from your mathematics book, okay, anything, uh, no matter you are at a calculus one, two, three, numerical analysis and principle math, no matter what, all you learn are functions because those are help you and I to solve our everyday life. Some of them are not function to go to infinity. And those are beautiful things. Those are allow us to predict something else. Anyway, so these will produce the same sequence by definition. However, so so now what happened is right now. So random number generator will general number so because function has to be predictable. So random number will generate predictable thing then that's not useful right now. Is that right? That's not useful. To you, so we have to fix this one right now. So random number generator is a very complicated function. No matter how complicated in mathematics, it's a function. It is going to generate the same output. So the thing we're going to do this is the only way we, we can modify this is let's give the new input. So we are going to initialize with new input. So the new input is called as rent. So let's give the new input right now. Let's give the new input. So you want to give a new input, the function is called as rent. So anybody who can tell me right now, what is the function name to provide a new input? To, for my random function. What's the name for that? I have a function and which used to provide a new S rent. Yes, you, you have to use that. Now, think about this right now. If, if the casino, every time I have to worry about one, one number I need to put in this and that, that's too much time. So, Commonly used is we initialize with your computer clock. As long as you have a computer, you have a cell phone, there's an internal clock. And the unit for this internal clock is millisecond. One second is 1,000 millisecond. So we are going to use that, the, you know, the millisecond. And this is 32 bits, 64 bit number one on that, all right? So time function is a value return function and to return the current time in number of second, number of seconds since January 1, 1970. So it's guaranteed. It's a large number anyway. It's an integer since ni January 9, 1970. Unless you and I uh, punch the computer exactly the same time, we probably don't have the same number. So what we do is, we are going to use uh, clock time as a C to initialize random number. And has two, we do that has two advantage. One, you're going to have unique input because you know, the unit is millisecond. Number two, no need to get C numbers from external program. All right, so when you think about casino, no need to do that. So let's come back to our program right now. And let's come back to our program right now. So can you tell me how, you know, we're going to do this right now. We're going to provide a new input. So what's a function allow me to provide new input? S and D. S rain. Okay, can you do that? Okay. Type it first. Can you type that first? All right. So now we already know that. And we also know we are going to use uh, current time uh, as a third 64 bits a number. 
and the time is by a millisecond, starting from counting from January one, nineteen seventy. All right. So we're going to put time and zero. Okay. Can you do that? Okay. First, we do that. Then we have a problem right here because your computer need to know the time. So you have to include and let's include C time. Uh, let's just do C time. All right. All right. So I have to have extra space parentheses here. It's okay. Now um, you use the S ring to use S ring is for you to provide new input. And what's a new input you use? Can anybody? What's a new input number? What's the new input numbers? What's the new input number? If I pull this one in, can anybody? What's the new input number? Is the current time in number of milliseconds since January one, nineteen seventy? All right, so we do this right now, and let's run your program right now. Again, so build it. And start without debugging. So mine is 6324. Can you type what you get for me? All right. So now we all get a number and different number right now. First of all, this number may not be useful because the the reason we want to use a random number probably we want to super lotto, we want to uh, simulate roll a die, or maybe we have uh forty student forty participants. And we're going to draw a number between one to forty, so give them a prize. So now you feel like, okay, cool, I can get a random number, different random number right now. But it doesn't help me too much. So we have to coming back right now to formula to a formula to produce a random number integer within a specific range will be this lower bound plus. Ran and use mod, use mod, okay, and parentheses upper bound minus lower bound plus one. So for example, for example, I am going to do to roll a die one to six. So lower bound is one, upper bound is six. So integer number is one plus ran mod by six minus one plus one. Oh, I I need to fix it. Six six minus one. So um, my student always tell me that it's waste your time. Minus one plus one is six. But I insist you need to do that because not all the time like this. It's okay, and I want you to remember the formula for a while. Once you become better, and next semester we don't need to do this. All right. So now um we uh take a look this example right here. Take a look example here. That's uh, develop a C plus plus program uh, to roll a die and dis display uh, ten times. Is that okay? Ten ten times. All right. So I am coming to do right here right now. Okay. So I'm going to do this. All right. So I am. Um, we probably don't need this right now. And we're going to display. Is that right? So I'm going to get rid of these. I'm going to two four tap over. And can you do that? Four and integer i equals zero i less than ten. All right. So we're going to do a uh, uh now, and I'm going to see out. <coughs> 
okay then the number then the number okay so remember I am going to do one to six one two six so what you're going to do is here one lower bound all right so make sure you know this okay this is lower bound higher bound so what you do is one lower bound plus R A N D rand all right mod and parentheses all right now upper bound minus lower bound plus one all right then I'm going to uh, pull like this right now all right semicolon can you do this for me please all right so uh, we're going to uh, simulate roll die 10 times all right so let's run it right now so I build it and I start without debugging so I got this right now and then I can make it a little bit better right here I can have uh, IO manip right here I can have a IO manip right here so before I do this I'm actually want to be set with that's set with to uh, 6 all right then I don't need this anymore I'm just going to do like that when I finish I'm um, see how end up line it's okay so this one I have a 10 and uh, each one is a uh, distance is 6 okay so now let me run it one more time for you so build it all right uh, again I have to close my thing okay just a minute uh, I have always closed it sorry all right so mm, build it and I'll start without debugging right here so I got these two one two one six six five four six one all right now I close it now do you understand this program right now yes or no now you need to memorize this is that right mm. okay so I'm going to, uh, so I finish I explain this one right now. And this is exactly 12 p.m. right now. Uh, I want to give you uh, 10 minutes to study. Is okay? So at the 12, uh, 10, let me write it down for you. Um, 12, uh, 10, half 15, 12, 15 am let's have a quiz um built in functions okay so 15 minutes study it's okay 15 minutes study and the quiz is 10 minutes it's okay so at 12 25 25 and I give you 15 minutes break so 12 30 we're going to resume class so far okay anybody who has any question who have concern please let me know right now otherwise we will do this way is okay anybody oh sure sure I'm so sorry All right. 